So October is apparently Hoodoo Appreciation Month. And with a lot of information that's being shared around, um, I actually loved it. I appreciate it because it's something that's been on my mind for a very long time. And the fact that the things that we have done or we still do are often demonized when they are just generational activities and things that have actually been passed down from Africa. So when we were colonized, of course, the first thing they have to do is strip us of everything that we know because the power is in our rituals, is in our way of life. So we had to be stripped of that, stripped of our spirituality, our food, our culture, in order to assimilate into whatever it is they wanted us to be. So things like uh, spices, herbs, roots, and the bulbs of plants, things that nature, you know, would be deemed good for us are often called root work because some of those things are technically and actually the roots of plants. And so in Haiti, you have voodoo or voodoo in different parts of the world. They call it juju, mojo. In America, in African-American culture, it's called hoodoo, obia. In the Caribbean, Santeria and Cuba, Bugeria and Mexico all of which have African roots. And unfortunately, a lot of the things that we've done and we still do is called witchcraft. It's called witchcraft to get us away from our natural, our natural way of life, to get us away from nature, get us away from the earth. It's called witchcraft. It's called dark magic, black magic, evil, demonic, to alienate us once again from our creator and to alienate us from nature to alienate us from our history from our natural healing to alienate us from our ancestors and you know just looking at some of the names dark magic black magic that tells you everything right there you know that the connotation of anything being referred to you know when it comes to us is deemed evil so being of the Gullah Geechee ancestry, of which I am, and my upbringing around roots, quote unquote roots, to be honest with you, was healing, was tinctures, mixtures. They were very, very common. And a lot of these things are coming back to me now. And I appreciate it because, um, to be honest with you, these things were just a way of life. You know, it wasn't anything that we that we even thought two times about. You know, we eat a lot of fruits. Uh, in the Gullah culture, naturally, a lot of vegetables, tons and tons of vegetables, um, seasonal vegetables, whatever seasonal, that's what we're eating. And of course, a lot of rice and grits and stuff like that. But uh, root vegetables is our go to rutabagas, potatoes, onions, garlic, turnips, yams, all of those things are root, quote unquote, vegetables. And a lot of those things are used in what some people call voodoo or hoodoo practices because that's where you get the word you know and the term root work because they're using these roots of these plants and so you have you know again different times of the year where the thing these things are are blooming and so that's what we eat and that's what we use during those times of the year and so if you want to talk about like new years for example a lot of people are practicing hoodoo and don't even know it. If you're eating collard greens on New Year's, you're 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 basically, you know, conjuring or hoping for money and to be um, prosperous in the year to come. You're eating Hoppin' Johns. You're hoping for good luck in that year to come, you know. So unfortunately, the things that we've done is is given a negative connotation and given these offshoot words like hoodoo and deemed as negative and evil. But a lot of these things are still extremely common in African culture and especially in the African-American church. And, and some of these things have af actually bled over into white culture and they don't even know what they're doing. They're doing things that, that came and stemmed from us, from African culture, which turned into hoodoo or voodoo, whatever you want to call it, culture. So, unfortunately, a lot of what we had to do when we were colonized is mask our history and our, our way of living 
with the veil of Christianity. And so that's why you have a lot of things that are all mixed up and people are thinking, oh, it's it's, um, you know, it's biblical or it's Christian or it's, it's holy when it's actually technically uh, stems from what you would call hoodoo or African uh, practices. All right. So some of those things is um, catching the Holy Spirit or shouting inside of a circle or shouting inside of a ring or catching the spirit, quote unquote. All right. Being taken over by a spirit, quote unquote. These things were not viewed by, you know, white slave masters and our, uh, and our colonizers very well because they were viewed as, you know, us continuing to acknowledge our history and our way of life, you know, stemming from, you know, our original culture over in Africa, whatever country or tribe that may have been we were from. So covering each other with a white cloth, which is something we still do here in African-American churches was something that they did when once one caught the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost and they would pass out. They wouldn't want the master to come and see them passed out because they would know that they were practicing their original religion. And um, they would cover the person with the cloth to make it look like they were taking a nap. So if you're still doing this in the Christian church or Holy Church or Kojic Church or wherever you're at, you are technically practicing hoodoo. Also throwing rice at a wedding, which is a sign of wealth, is also a hoodoo practice because we brought rice over here from Africa and it is used in certain practices or certain rituals or whatnot. And um, one thing that I wanted to bring to mind, which is pretty common knowledge right now, is um, if you are a member of Kojic, Church of God in Christ, you might want to look up the founder, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, who is said to have been a hoodoo priest. So all of the practices and names that I named, um, these different names from different parts of the world, they're actually all one and the same. It's just that wherever we were scattered across the world, you know, we we incorporated whatever we were being taught and, and whatever was being forced upon us at that time, we incorporated it. Um, into, you know, whatever our ancestral practices were. And um, there were, they're, they're still and they were deemed as evil and demonic. And a lot of those things are just a part of our heritage and our, our culture. Just a lot of things we actually forgot about and we, we still do. And we just have no idea of where it actually stems from or the history of it. So a lot of things in Christianity... We like look into the stars and the mandrakes and curses, healings. Um, when Yeshua put the dirt and spit on the guy's eye to heal him. A lot of those things can be deemed as hoodoo or voodoo. All it takes is just somebody to name it, whatever they want to name it. And so throughout my life, I have been in the holiness Pentecostal church. And then I went to Baptist and then I went back to holiness and then I went into understanding who we are as a people and to um, being Israelites and Hebrews. And I was in that. Uh, it's not was if you are that you, you're always going to be that, but it's just actually, you know, fellowshipping and things like that. But right now I'm just in a really quiet place because I know that there's good and evil and there's evil inside of good. And not all of Christianity is good and not all of what some people call evil or demonic is actually evil or demonic. It's just been termed by termed that by other people who are seeking to gain something from you. And unfortunately, that happens a lot in African culture, um, African countries and the continent of Africa, because there is something there that they want. So they have to change your minds. They have to take your strength away. They have to remove you from your history, from your culture, from your understanding, from your spirituality. So when you have things labeled as black magic and dark magic, when it's actually coming from the earth and coming from the roots and the herbs of the earth of which the most high gave us to heal ourselves, that's a problem. And that's something we really, really need to look at. And in 2023, unfortunately, we still have a lot of uh, people in Christianity that aren't getting the full picture, that aren't getting the full context. We're still going to church on Sundays 
Sunday. Look it up. <laughs> Sunday to worship the Most High Creator. All right. And we're going there on Sundays to worship the Most High Creator. And we're not getting the full story. We're getting little snippets, snippets in one scripture or half a scripture. And a whole sermon is being based off of that with, with no history or understanding being given to the people. And so I'm in a very quiet stage of life right now. I'm not fellowshipping um, like I used to with, with other people because I'm just trying to get a, a deeper and fuller understanding from the creator itself, you know, and sometimes we can get clouded when we have a lot of people around us with the same mindset. And sometimes you have to get alone and get quiet to get a better understanding. And that's where I am right now. And I find it quite okay because I'm starting to understand. I'm, um, my mind is open. My ears are open and I'm in a really good spot. And so this being a uh, Hoodoo Appreciation Month, again, this is something that's been on my mind because I keep wondering and kept wondering why everything that we do is considered, you know, evil or wrong or, you know, demonic. What were we doing before Christianity, before it was forced down our throats? And the last thing I want to leave you with is the fact that the ancestor Nat Turner of the rebellion, he had a Bible. Slave masters and white people gave us an adulterated, an even more adulterated Bible than the adulterated Bible already was because the King James Version is a version of the Bible, which means that there are ton, there are a lot of different versions. So if they say you're not supposed to change the word of the Most High, you're not supposed to change anything, then why are there so many different versions? Okay. And so to get a better understanding, we need to understand Hebrew and Greek to read the original context and, and scripts of the Bible and things that we're reading, because we're reading um, translations of translations, to be honest with you. So we're not we still don't have the full truth, even when we think we do. But anyway, getting back to the slave Bible, certain things were taken out of the slave Bible, anything about strength, uprising, the Israelites, um, knowing who they were and going back to their creator, all of that stuff was removed from the slave Bible. And that was for a reason. So I just want to bring that to your attention, your understanding to help you go and look, research, understand. And um, if you are still in Christianity or any type of religion, just, you know, you can walk and do baby steps. But just get an understanding in everything you do. Get an understanding, knowledge, wisdom. Don't just take the word of others, not even from people that look like you and especially from people who don't. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>